is a rundown of some of the dApps within the finance.vote dApp suite. And we'll start with markets.vote, which is the prediction market dApp, which we use to create the crypto space. Now, with so many new tokens launching daily, it's almost impossible to separate the blue chips from the rug pulls. Markets.vote builds curated lists of the best tokens on every chain by paying users to make predictions on the best performing tokens weekly. It uses a decentralized identity system as a form of civil resistance. To take part, users have to mint an ID, and each ID is an NFT. As you can see here, they each come with a one-off piece of artwork too. The price for each ID doubles after every purchase and then decays over time. This implies an economic cost to swinging consensus. Here we can see a user minting an ID on the Ethereum chain. Markets.vote currently operates on the Ethereum chain and the Binance Smart Chain, with other future chains being voted on by the DAO. Once a user has minted their ID, they then have access to the finance.vote ecosystem. And on top of that, the better they perform in the weekly markets.vote prediction market, the more FVT they can earn and the more V or voice credits they build on that ID. And in the future, this voting power will carry over to other applications, including the governance dApps. Markets.vote uses quadratic voting. Essentially, this gives you a pool of points that you can allocate to the issues that mean the most to you. Only the more you vote on one issue, the more expensive each vote is by the square of the vote. So, for example, voting once on something will cost you one voice credit, but voting five times on something will cost you 25, five times five voice credits. So you can see the user has a curated list of 10 tokens and they have to decide which of these tokens will increase in value the most over the next seven days. Which tokens make the list is also voted on by the users too. And as a user spends their voice credits, you can see their total decreases at the top of the screen so they can see how many credits they've got left to allocate. Once they've made their predictions, they hit vote and accept the transaction in their wallet and that's it. They can then keep track of their votes on the account page here. And as you can see, users can have as many IDs as they wish. But remember, the cost to mint an ID doubles with every purchase. So there is an economic impact for each additional ID minted. Next up is Yield.Vote. This is our liquidity mining system which uses radical crypto economics to build new markets in a way that is tunable by governance, effectively replacing market makers with distributed liquidity providers in decentralised exchanges. It's designed to stop whales easily taking the whole pool, ensuring that even small token holders can play market maker and ensuring a fair distribution of tokens over time. Now, Yield.Vote uses a combination of quadratic voting and Harburger taxes to broker the sale of protocol property. So here's our resident pool. And on the main screen here, you can see things like the minimum deposit required, the maximum deposit allowed, how many lots are vacant and so on. So here's how we would take a vacant lot. So we can click on stake LP tokens in the top right and you'll see a menu on the left hand side listing all of the lots in the game. Every lot will have a unique building. In fact, in the near future, we'll have a 3D interactive city where you can see all your buildings and play the competitive yield game. So let's pick one that's vacant and here you'll be able to set your deposit size, burn rate and see your projected APY. Now the deposit size doesn't affect your APY, it simply acts as a barrier to entry for others trying to take that lot. The higher your deposit, the more LP tokens someone else will need in order to take that lot off you. The burn rate is the amount of LP tokens you're willing to burn as a Harburger tax denoted in way per block. Remember, in this game you have to burn in order to earn. You don't want to set the burn rate too high as then you'll burn more than you earn and end up out of pocket. And APY stands for Average Pulse Expected Percentage Yield. It's very variable and it's very high for some of the time. The pulse here is shown as a graph on the main page. This is the length of the liquidity mining pulse in blocks. One pulse lasts one month and there are 2 million FVT spread across each pulse. It's not a flat rate either. It starts off higher and then lowers quadratically. So the earlier you get in, the more you'll earn. So here we can just set a modest deposit of 25 LP tokens and a relatively low burn rate of 0.1 LP tokens per pulse. Now the app will show you how many blocks it will take before all of your deposit is burned away at the rate you've just set. And it's worth noting that even if all your deposit is burned away, you'll still hold that lot until someone takes it off you. As you can see, this burn rate gives us an APY of 3,294%, which isn't too shabby. Obviously, because the burn rate is low, it's likely someone else will come along and set a higher burn rate and take our position. But for now, we'll go with this. So we click on claim lot, approve the transaction and the associated fee and wait a short while. And we've now claimed lot 15. We can head to my lots to see the lots we own and the FVT rewards we've earned. Now you can also take lots that are already occupied and this is where it gets fun. So let's head back to the main page and select a lot that's already occupied. Lot 30 here, for example, looks good. 
By clicking the lot, we can see the current owner's deposit size and burn rate. We'll need to set a higher deposit and a higher burn rate to take that lot from its current owner. So we'll do exactly that. We'll put a deposit of 105 and increase the burn rate slightly to 0.2 LP per pulse. If we click Occupy Slot and again accept the transaction fee, and once we've got confirmation that the transaction has gone through, we can head to my lots to confirm we've taken ownership. That person then kicked from their lot and takes their rewards and remaining deposit with them, and we also paid the gas fee for their eviction. And at any point, you can withdraw the FBT you've earned and keep your lots, or if you want to, you can vacate a lot permanently and claim your rewards at the same time. And the pulse is run from one to another seamlessly, so users can jockey for position at the end of a pulse when rewards are at their lowest in order to try and earn a spot for the start of the next pulse when rewards are at their highest. It's gamified yield farming and it seeks to find a natural equilibrium among participants as to the value of a lot within the protocol. Okay, so up next is Influence.Vote. This is our second layer governance system that uses both NFT and token gated decision making to build high signal to noise dialogue, basically, about anything DAO participants want to talk about. It's decentralized content curation that allows creators on the internet to turn their feeds into DAOs. This is the core of our sense making system that will capture the desires of DAO participants and make sure that token holders of any size are listened to and heard. So here we can see a vote on the next roadmap priority. This allows token holders and ID holders to have a say as to what the team focuses on next in terms of our roadmap progression. So on the main page here, we can see a list of all the options that users can vote on. All of these were suggested by the users too, of course. Influence.vote also uses quadratic voting, as we saw earlier in markets.vote, meaning users can allocate their voting power towards the choices that mean the most to them, with every additional vote costing more. Token holders without an ID can take part. They get one influence credit per 1,000 FVT they hold. And ID holders spend the amount of I that they've accumulated with that ID. And the minimum an ID will have is 100. So you can scroll through the list of options and allocate your pool of influence as you wish. And once you've allocated all of your influence, you can click on the vote button at the bottom. And before you can submit those votes, you'll be taken to the justify your vote page where you'll be asked to add justification for your voting choices. So if a user, for example, thinks that the team adding a new chain is more important than adding additional utility to the token, then they can tell us why or make some suggestions if they want. And this justification forces users to think more carefully about their allocation of influence points. And it's an important stage in the voting process. Users can always go back and reallocate their influence points if they change their mind at this stage, which they very often do. And once we've added our justification for each vote and we're happy with our choices, we can click on submit vote. We'll be asked to approve the submission in MetaMask and this is gasless, so there are no charges. Wait a short while and then we are taken back to the vote page and you can see how we voted, how everyone else voted, as well as reading through everyone's justifications for their vote choices. Influence.vote is the core of our sense making system that will capture the desires of DAO participants and make sure that token holders of any size are listened to and heard. Okay, bank.vote. Now this is not a bank. It's a trust list vesting and token storage system that distributes assets to network participants in a way that makes emission schedules predictable and fair. It's a decentralized payroll system that will allow people who want to work for a DAO to receive their payment in a way that minimizes supply shocks to the market. Building a big treasury is one thing, but spending it is quite another. And Bank.Vote streams money to the people who bring value to the network and rug proofs the economy, stopping the less trustworthy characters from ending the game before the other players are ready to stop playing. And finally, we can get a sneak peek at the Auction.Vote 3D VR auction house, where we'll be offering token launches and high value NFT auctions. Now our auction system discovers a fair listing price by iterating through price and supply using a new auction design that we're calling the exponential token auction. It bootstraps and locks liquidity to ensure there's a viable market available on the day of listing. And there are no pre-sale allocation games, no staking to access, no engineered pump and dumps, just open permissionless price discovery. Our new version, which is the binary search auction, discovers the optimal price for NFTs, which will allow DAOs to not only purchase NFTs, but curate and sell them whenever they want. Price discovery of new assets is a foundation of what DAOs will need to do to manage their treasuries and bootstrap themselves into existence. This is basically a launch pad, but fair. As with all our dApps, they are totally decentralized. An instance will launch locally on the user's laptop or PC and interacts directly with the smart contract, so there are no servers involved at all. 
users can congregate in this space and all the NFTs for auction will be displayed around the metaverse like a gallery. And when an NFT comes up for auction, it's displayed here where this floating blue orb is and users can either bid using their VR remotes or via the menu option in the top left. This is a shared space basically that our users will populate and make their own. It's a venue for hire basically. Partners can rent it out, host parties, curate collections and sell their goods. And we imagine that each of our dApps become the infrastructure for more elaborate and ever expanding digital worlds in the future. Where this goes, we have no idea. And that's it. Thanks for taking a look through the dApps of the finance.vote dApp suite. We hope we've given you a pretty extensive overview. Cheers.